Why would you want to run two of the same card when you can run two different cards that do the same thing? Espies. up joe crew it is me joku dmd and i'm here today with a deck profile on dark broly if this is your first time here and you like what you see please take the time to hit that subscription button it really helps me out and if you're a returning member of the joe crew thank you for coming back thank you for continued support let's get into this deck profile yo all right so this is dark broly it's mononoke spice um, but I was super psyched for Dark Broly as soon as it was announced. Uh, for those of you who don't know what this leader does, essentially every turn you can look at your top five cards, optionally take a life if you want to, place up to three 30k black cards in your drop area, and then your drop area essentially works as fuel for the whole deck. When you swing, you draw a card, and when you flip, you draw two cards, and on this side, you can take three cards from your warp area, send them to your drop area, and draw a card. Let's get into the deck here. We got four copies of Broly Savage Rush. Broly Savage is one of the thickest, biggest boys. He comes in real fast, one energy, just tap him down. You can also play him from your drop area if you send three black battle cards from your drop to your warp and then play him out for one energy. Once he's out, you wanna have a Dragon Ball. When you get these Dragon Balls, the seven star Dragon Balls, you just activate main, play a Dragon Ball on this man, send the Dragon Ball and the Broly to the drop area and play one of your six drop Broly's or one of your seven drop Broly's. So we run four and four of the Dragon Balls and the Broly's. We run three Toa's and the Toa basically will grab you a Dragon Ball from your deck and you can also get a Dragon Ball from your drop area for one black energy. So your turn one plays, you really wanna look for that one drop Broly or the Toa. Three of the Blocker Boys, these are the big boy Blocker Boys. Broly, the new Mask Sand, welcome to the party. This man will stop your attack. He's got 30k power and you play him for one energy essentially. So this deck just plays big bodies on board. Four of the Demon Realm Ravager. This is Broly from the Demon Realm. And when he throws his ball of energy and lands on the field, your opponent has to discard one card and warp a battle card from their drop area. So good for getting rid of stuff like Rebrand for hand control or apes in the drop area that people use to draw cards. Rolly the uncontrollable berserker. Look at the muscles on this guy. Look at the size of this guy. Ah oh, man, he's just gonna squeeze you. He warps a battle card. Also a 30K body on board. So the three of these Broly's, you can play them with the one star ball from your deck or drop area, or you can play them by activating main out of your drop area. You grab six cards from your drop area, you send them to your warp area, and then you play this guy out of your drop area. All right, now this boy is amazing. So this Broly, the unbridled destruction, you can swing with one of your six drop Broly's, pay two energy, evolve this man on top of them. He stands back up. If they're over three life, what they probably are, they're gonna have to either get rid of three cards or they're gonna have to crit a life. And in most cases, they're gonna crit the life because you don't wanna lose three cards from hand. He also is treated as red and black in all areas. So since he is a red sand, he is also a target for heartfelt plea. Now this is the spice, boys. Let me tell you about the spice over here. So when you evolve this man, you awaken, and when you awaken, if you have Heartfelt Plea in your hand, you declare Heartfelt Plea, crack this guy off the board, play Heartfelt Plea by sacking him off, and Heartfelt Plea has Offering and also has Triple Strike. So your opponent's either gonna have to crit a life or you get to draw two cards. So if you're on your turn and you swing with your leader, draw a card, awaken, declare Heartfelt, play Heartfelt, draw two cards, draw two cards for Awakening, and then after that, use your leader skill to draw another card, you're looking at a plus six turn. They're, they're unlikely to crit the life. And if they do, then good for you. So we run two Heartfelts because he's nice. It's a great looking card, really handsome. All right, next let's get into some of the Overrealm stuff. So we run two of these Bardocks. Bardock is just really useful. You know, I think this card is amazing. I've been saying this card was amazing since it got printed. A lot of people were really excited about Man on a Mission. But this dude is a 25k dual attack and the pressure of getting over a 25 is a lot more than the pressure of getting over a 20. 
and you have to get over the 25 twice. So this card gains more value in terms of hand control than I think Man on a Mission does. And I think this card is amazing. Here's a little bit more spice. This card is fantastic. You can overwhelm this for three and you can get three cards in your drop area just from your leader skill. So he's basically a free play with your leader every turn if you're not playing the Broly's. And you can activate battle by pitching a card and give this guy double strike. So he's a 15K double strike crit basically for free. It's spicy. And he's trunks, he's got banana hairs and he's coming from the future. Masked sand, brainwashed, no more. The main thing that you're gonna use this guy for usually is you keep him in your hand. If they hit you with some crazy attack like a quadruple strike or a victory strike or something, you just activate battle, play him, you deal a damage to yourself and then you don't take any more damage for the battle. He's also a free overwhelm six. So you can also just get this guy on board by overwhelming six and then you get another 30k swing. He is a great play extender on top of his amazing activate battle skill. This SS3 tag team Sun Gohan. So essentially anytime something gets knocked off your board from a skill, that can even include Overrealm when this card leaves your battle area or when you get rid of a Dark Broly off your leader effect. This guy can proc and you can play him for free and he's a 15k blocker which also gets you a body on board to swing if you're going against a uh, violent rays or something like that all right here's the spice boy mr he he gotta love him what deck do you not want to play mr he he in i don't know this deck any anything that goes wide you gotta you gotta run mr he he so we run two of these guys. Now, basically what you do is you get all your Brolies on board. You can sack your three Brolies and then you can play them again. So this guy is gonna kill three of your Brolies. He kills an opponent's card. You get a 20K swing or a potential blocker and you get to play all your Brolies again. So if you had your Brolies out from your previous turn, you just crack them off, play them again. Or if you overwhelm, you can crack one of your overwhelms because your overwhelms are gonna go away at the end of the turn anyway, and they work as great fuel for this guy. So there's a lot of ways to play this dude, and he's just, you know, a lot of utility. He's Mr. Hee Hee, he's got the balls in his hands. All right, for the super combos, we run four of SS Vegeta, the Prince Strikes Back. The Prince has had about enough and he's ready to strike back. You can see with his hand, it's very clear. His hand is in a striking motion. When you're under four life, when you combo with it, you can take a card from your hand, put it at the bottom of your deck and draw two cards. And that is why we play two heartfelt because the other heartfelt, if you don't have the energy to combo with it, you don't need it in your hand. You can't charge it and get use out of it. So you just bottom deck it with uh, Vegeta, the Prince strikes back, and then you draw two cards. So good, such a good super combo. Two power bursts. Power Burst is great because it can get your one drop Rollies back from the drop area. It can also get your Toas from the drop area and you can also use it when you're tapped out. So Power Burst saves lives. All right, here's a little bit of spice for you. These Petrifications. Petrification is one of the spiciest negates in the game. This negate stops pending autos. So things like Alliance, things like autos that draw you cards or look through things. This just freezes a battle card. And you can also freeze a different battle card. So if you're not, if you're concerned about another battle card doing something, they swing with something, you can petrification, negate the attack, and then choose the other battle card, ignoring barrier, and just freeze it. This card is insane. Uh, Bardock the Tenacious, we run one of these because it's kind of basically like an on-turn Nimbus. You just overwhelm for it, play it, and then they can only swing once with a battle card during their turn. And it's a great looking card, so if this is in my energy, I'm a happy guy. Gravy and Demigris Thal. Gravy? Can I get a Gravy? Excuse me, sir, do you have a fine, fresh cup of Gravy? Now, this dude should totally be run at three, but we only have one foil, so we're only playing one. Once we get two more foils, we're definitely gonna make space and put two more of these in the main. But this card is awesome because when you combo with it, you get to move two cards from your warp area to your drop area. And your drop area is just a gas for your whole deck. So the more stuff you can move from your warp to your drop, the more stuff you can do in your turn, and the more value you can get out of your leader and all your battle cards. Now, we run one Champa and one Kai. Why, might you ask? Why would you do that? Well, the simple answer is, it's spicy, man. Why would you want to run two of the same card when you can run two different cards that do the same thing? As spies, you just got to remember to claim double strike with this one. This one will put the double strike on there. This one, you have to claim double strike. So basically when you combo with either of these, you can give a battle card double strike or give any card double strike, uh, but you have to claim that you're putting it on the battle card with the Kai. Chompa just does it. And last but not least, Yo-Kai. Yo-Kai, best looking card in the set. Realistically, this card doesn't get there. It's a 40k beat stick. 
I mean, if you're playing against blue, yeah, it's gonna have some utility in getting rid of their unison. This card is just going to be in your energy because it looks so good. If I have this in my opening hand, I'm charging it because it just looks gorgeous and I get to look at it the whole game and I get to tap it and untap it and turn it sideways and turn it on sideways. So our leader card, let's talk about our leader card. When your leader is awakened, you get to take three cards from your warp area and send them to your drop area. Now that is super useful because all of your Broly's can play out of your drop area. So the more cards you can move from your warp area to your drop area, the more you're fueling your Broly's to come out. And any card with 30,000 battle power, you can essentially just combo it off the board. Even when it's in rest mode, you activate battle and get rid of it and give this card 5K. So all your 30Ks, when they're rested, you can just get rid of them. And when you get rid of them off the skill, that procs Gohan, you can play the Gohan for free. And you can also get another space to play another one of the Broly. So if you have the Broly on board for the last turn, you swing with him, then swing with your leader, combo the Broly off the board, play another Broly from your drop area, make them warp a card, warp one of their battle cards, whatever it is, get value. But yeah, this is the deck. This is the list. It's uh, really, really fun to play. There's a lot of lines of play. There's a lot of different stuff you can do. And uh, at the end of the day, Dark Proly is the way. So let's break this, man, and let's have fun. I am Joku DMD. I, uh, can't, I can't end the episode without doing a dental tooth tip. So I do recommend an electric toothbrush. The Sonicare electric toothbrush is the one that I think works best. And if you are using electric toothbrush, make sure that you switch the head every three months. Some of the newer toothbrushes will give you a signal. It'll beep a bunch of times. It'll be like, what's wrong with my toothbrush? But it's basically telling you that toothbrush needs a new head. So make sure you are changing your electric toothbrush head every three months. And if you're using a manual toothbrush, make sure to change that out every three months as well, because the toothbrush has become a lot less effective after having been used for a long period of time, long being three months. But yeah, change it out, keep that brush fresh. Thanks for watching this deck profile. I hope you guys had a fantastic time and I will see you next time.